hey, we're better than these guys, like, for real. Yeah. What's up, Panther Nation? In this next video, we're going to look at Penn State defensive end Yator Gross Matos, who the Panthers selected in the second round at 38 overall. With Gross Matos, you're looking at a guy with elite traits. He's 6'5", 266, 35 inch arms, prototypical size for a 4'3 defensive end, but he's also an explosive athlete as measured by his broad jump and vertical jump that he posted at the combine. When Matt Rule talked about his player evaluation, he talked about how he looks for specific traits that can be developed into high ceiling players as opposed to looking for the most polished players coming out. And I think with Gross Matos, he, ex he fits exactly that. You look at his traits, his upside, his athletic athleticism, all these things, and how you want to project him as a professional, it should all make you excited about what he can become. So in this video, we're going to break down Gross Motto's game in both run and pass defense. We're going to look at why he's considered such a high ceiling player at the next level. The first thing that stands out about Gross Matos is that he's a strong edge setter. He does this by winning on initial contact, he maintains a good low pad level, has proper hand placement, and he's able to use his length to stand the defense, the offensive lineman rather up and force the ball carrier inside to where his pursuit's coming. On this play, let's take a look at what he's able to do. He has a good job getting a good initial strike on the offensive tackle. Watch him utilize his length. The offensive tackle is not even able to get his hands on Gross Motto's chest because he's so long. He's able to force the ball carrier back inside. You see the Penn State defenders pursuing to the ball, and they're able to get the strip, force the fumble, and make the play. You just see, although Gross Motto's didn't record a forced fumble or a tackle or fill up the stat sheet on that play, he should be credited with an assist because he was able to secure the edge, force the ball carrier inside to where his pursuit was coming, and as a result, they were able to force the fumble and create a turnover on the play. So when you hear Matt Rule say that Gross Models is primarily going to be a strong side edge in addition to Steven Weatherly, that's what he's talking about, just his ability to set the edge and be that strong run defender, control that C-gap and maintain proper gap discipline. So that thing... At a minimum, this ability will allow Gross Models to see reps early and often as part of this D-line rotation. Another factor that makes Gross Models an effective run defender is his length and athleticism. This comes in handy, particularly against read option plays. On this play against Ohio State, you're going to see him bite on the dive play, but watch him be able to recover, change direction, and utilize his length to grab the quarterback and prevent any additional yards on that play. So you just see where that length, that athleticism, just allows him to further be more effective as a run defender. You'll see something similar here against Minnesota. You see Gross Models has the edge here. He's going to get blocked down a little bit, but watch him be able to recover just look at that long radius to be able to get his arms out there slow the running back down to allow his pursuit to come in and clean up the job and allow Penn State to gang tackle and limit a minimal gain there he's also able to chase plays down from behind on here you're going to see Ohio State run a read option again and watch Gross models he's going to be able to stay disciplined to prevent any quarterback keeper but then he's going to be able to come down crash down on the running back as well so you just see how that athleticism allows you to effectively defend the read option plays. Then lastly, you're just going to see Gross Models is going to be the spill defender here. So he's going to force the running back to bounce the ball outside to where the contain is. But you'll see here he's able to still recover, chase the ball down, and still force the fumble and get a turnover for his team. So you just see the kind of ways that he can impact the run game immediately. As a pass rusher, Gross Matos is still evolving. I wouldn't say he was a dominant pass rusher in college in terms of production, but when you just look at the traits that we talked about earlier, you look at some of the things you see on film with his hand technique, it just gets you excited about what he could potentially become at this level in terms of pass rush as he continues to develop his hand technique, he continues to start to plan his rush attack and diversify his pass rush moves. So what I'll do as far as his pass rushing technique is I'll just show you a few clips of why I'm excited and optimistic about his ceiling as a pass rusher in the NFL. 
Let's first watch gross models execute this stab and swap move, which I've seen them use very often. First thing you're going to do is fire out of your stance and sell the bull rush. You want to get the offensive lineman prepared for that head-on collision. You're going to take his right hand and stab the offensive tackle in the chest right between the numbers while keeping his left hand free. That's his swat hand. Well, watch what he does with the swat hand. He's going to swat down on the lineman's arm to disengage him, and now he's cleared him. So now you finish your rush. He's going to take his right hand to clear the offensive lineman, push him off, get into the quarterback, collapse the pocket, and record the quarterback sack. So right there you just see Gross Model's ability to execute that stab and swat move. Let's take a look at it, a different play from a different angle so you can get a closer look at his hand technique here. He's going to start by firing out of his stance to sell that bull rush, stab with the right hand, swat down with the left hand, and watch him finish his rush, seal off the tackle, and get after the quarterback to defeat the offensive tackle on that play. So this is what we want to see from Gross Models going forward. You know, combine this hand technique, diversify those pass rush moves, and combine it with his elite athletic profile, his length, you know, utilize all these tools and see him evolve as a pass rusher. Let's watch one more play, but this time he's going to turn the corner. He's going to stab with his right hand, keeping the left hand with the cast on it free. He's going to swat down with the cast, you know, looking like Jason Pierre Paul. What do you think of that comp? And once he swats down on the Ryman's right hand with his cast hand, he's going to bend the corner, dip, get after the quarterback and help get in on the sack. So that's what you see from gross models as far as the stab and swat move goes. Gross Matos is extremely effective as a pass rusher when he's able to utilize his length. We talked earlier about those 35-inch arms. Here against Ohio State, we're going to watch him utilize his long arm. Think of it like a stiff arm for a running back, but what you'll see him do, he strikes the offensive lineman with his left arm right between the numbers, and look at his length. He's able to extend, and the offensive tackle is not even able to get his hands on Gross Matos' chest because of that length. He's going to be able to redirect. He's going to finish the rush by using his right arm to seal off the offensive tackle, turn the corner, then collapse the pocket and get in on the sack there. So right there, you're just seeing him be able to utilize all those tools in his toolbox as part of his pass rush arsenal. We want to be able to see that more consistently from him. Here against Minnesota, you're going to watch Gross Models utilize this push-pull move. So here, he's going to come out of a two-point stance. First, he's going to do a good job of not taking that false step, exploding out of his stance, and he's going to strike the offensive tackle right in between the numbers near the chest plate. Now watch his hands here. He's going to get a good grab of the offensive tackle right underneath the shoulder pads, get a good tug on that jersey. Now watch what he's able to do. Stand him up and then just yank him down, get rid of him, and get after the quarterback. So again, you're just seeing the kinds of rush moves that he has in his arsenal that we just want to see more often and continue to evolve this part of his game. So when he's able to combine the hand technique, use it, utilize his length, and combine it with his already elite explosiveness and athletic profile, I think he can eventually evolve into one of the more dangerous pass rushers in this league. And in the last part of this video, we'll just take a look at Gross Models' versatility. This seems to be a common theme with all of the draft picks from Matt Rule in his first year. In addition to playing edge, he's also lined up at three technique as well. You know, why would you put a 265-pound defensive in it? Three technique, well, particularly on pass rush downs. Think about it. You want to create favorable matchups to get after the quarterback. So if an opponent is facing a third and 12 or a third and 10 must pass type situation, you can put your four best pass rushers on the field. Maybe go with a Brian Burns and Marquise Haynes as defensive end and move a guy like Gross Matos inside to create a favorable matchup against guards and centers. Because with his speed, ball get off, and length, he'll be a difficult matchup for a guard or center type player to handle him in a pass rush situation. Now at, at Penn State, they did have him as a three technique on rundowns as well. On this play, for instance, you're gonna see him take on a double team and allow the linebacker to meet the running back in the hole and stuff him for a minimal gain. But taking on blocks and double teams while he's shown the ability to do it, it's not something that he was consistently successful at. Like in these next couple of plays, you're gonna see him have difficulty holding his ground and get pushed around a little bit. And we saw that with F.A. Obata last year. So I do know that he can play three technique, he can play five technique in an odd front, but I think he's best suited for a 4-3 defensive end. Gross Models was also dropped into coverage occasionally at Penn State. Now, personally, I've never really been a fan of dropping defensive linemen into coverage, but it does allow you to disguise coverages and disguise blitzes better. So if that's something Phil Snow has in mind, don't be surprised to see maybe Gross Matos drop in the coverage at a couple times. And he does have that athleticism to be able to play in space as well.
So now you see what makes Gross Matos a high ceiling player. He has the great tools to become an elite pass rusher and this part of his game continues to evolve. At a minimum, we know that he can be a solid edge setter, be a good rotational player and give you 30 to 40% of the reps per game. But I think if he can continue to evolve as a pass rusher, continue to diversify his pass rush move, polish up on that hand technique and just combine these skills with his already elite athletic profile, I think he can be one of the more dominant defensive ends in this league. So we're, I'm very excited to see the kind of ceiling that this guy has and if whether or not he'll be able to achieve it during his career.